All right. So for those of you who have no idea about what Scrum or Kanban is, um, these are two different approaches that allow you to be agile. All right. Scrum is a push based system. Kanban is a pull based system. Scrum is a push based system because in Scrum, we are always trying to optimize for the ability to predict over a period of time. What that means is you're going to have things broken down into fixed batch sizes that are going to be wrapped around in standardized durations of time called sprints. So think of a sprint as a time box, where, which is going to be best if you have consistent durations over time, which means if you decide to do a one week sprint, then the idea is you're always trying to break work down into one week sprints. All right now, if you're going to get to a point where you feel like, yeah, you know what, one week is not working for me, the way I decompose my work, it lends itself better to a two week sprint or a three week sprint, then obviously you should change. What you don't want to do is you don't want to constantly skip, hop and jump across sprint boundaries. So you don't want to do a one week sprint, then a two week sprint, then a three week sprint. You don't want to do that. The reason why is because the goal here is to make your understanding of the work, which will progress over a period of time. Like you'll get better at that stuff over time, right? So you want to make sure your understanding of the work and the way you break it down, the way you estimate that stuff, you get better at that by making sure that time is always standardized. That means sprints are always going to be one week or two weeks or three weeks. And what we'll get, what you will get better at is how much work you will do in those sprints. All right. So Scrum is going to be a push based system where you set up a boundary, you shove work into that and you lock the time box while the time box is running. You don't mess with the scope. So scope is frozen. No such thing as scope creep, all of that stuff. No swapping things out. All right. You want to keep it frozen at the end of the time box. You look back in a retrospective and see how the work went adjust for the next one. So that is a push based system. And you contrast that with a Kanban approach, which is going to be a pull based system. So if it's going to be a pull based system, that means you as a team member are going to be pulling more work and you're going to be pulling more work based on available capacity, which means in Kanban, you're not going to have standardized work uh, time durations. So in Kanban, there is no concept of sprints. All right. Now Scrum and Kanban both are iterative by nature. That means there's a lot of refactoring. You're going constantly back and forth, back and forth, looking at stuff. But in Scrum, there is a standard duration of time in a sprint where you don't change scope. In Kanban, you have a concept of cycles, right? But the advantage of doing things in cycles is that you can have three classes of work that can be completely unique. That means the first class of work can be something that's new as an investigation or a discovery. The second class of work can be just maintenance work. The third class of work can be something that comes in the last minute, like a production issue or a defect or a bug of some kind. All these three classes of work can go in parallel at the same time. So it's almost like three classes of work going in parallel and you as a team member are skipping, hopping and jumping across these three classes of work. As soon as one of the pieces of work is done, you go to your backlog, pull in more work based on available capacity. So what that means now is in Scrum, you're going to have consistent sprints in Kanban. You're not going to have consistent time boundaries. So in Kanban, you can have a two week cycle, a one week cycle, a two month cycle. They can all vary which now strategically, and this is a very popular interview prep question also, strategically in Scrum, you're always trying to figure out how do I get better at predicting work over time? So like, what is my forecast ratio? Like commitment versus completion, if you will. And you're trying to get better at being able to predict that. So your optimization goal is to predict over time. In Kanban, the work has already been analyzed or rather the work sometimes comes in without any line of sight. So your goal is to just show up to work with a smile on your face, and when that new ticket comes in, you work on it, which now means you can't predict how long you will take, how long you will take to finish it. So in Kanban, the goal is to maximize throughput. That means keep working efficiently and don't end up in any bottlenecks in time. So in Scrum, you're optimizing for the ability to predict. In Kanban, you're maximizing for throughput. You're trying to rush it as quickly as possible. So efficiency is key. This is why in Kanban, you will hear a lot of concepts like classes of service, whip limits or work in progress limits bottlenecks, service level agreements and things like that. In Scrum, you will hear a lot of terms like velocity, which is rate of completion of work or predictability or the ability to burn down work over a period of time, like sprint burn downs, release burn downs. All right. So there is no such thing as which is more effective. All right. Scrum is awesome. Scrum can also be terrible. Kanban is awesome. Kanban can also be terrible. The goal here is to understand the applicability of the approach to the kind of problem you're solving. So now ask yourself, is the majority of my work planable? If it's planable, great. Then maybe you should standardize some time boundaries around it. You should do a sprint and within the sprint, you should try to get better at being able to predict over a period of time. 
If you say, I can't predict what my work is. I don't know. On a Monday, I plan. On a Tuesday, I change again. And that probably means you don't have enough line of sight for the future. So there you want to be a more flow-based approach like a Kanban approach. All right? So that's one fundamental difference. push pace versus pull-based system. Another, another difference would be most of the work that you will do using Scrum will be planable. Most of the work you will do in Kanban will be interrupt-driven, which will come at the last minute. All right? So you want to be able to adapt to that. And that's why you don't hold yourself hostage to a specific time box, right? In Scrum, you have dedicated roles. This is difference number three. You have a Scrum master, product owner, and a bunch of developers. In Kanban, whatever roles your organization has, you can just mimic them, which means you can just borrow those. So Kanban doesn't bring the rigor of roles that Scrum brings with it, right? So three basic differences, if you think about it. So the goal here, when you think about effectiveness of a method is, is my work planable or is it not planable? If it's planable, you're probably more complex in nature. So you can you know, predict over a period of time by planning well. If it's unplanable, then you're probably more flow-based. You have to go with the flow, as they say. Or as they say in boxing, roll with the punches, right? You keep on rolling your shoulders as the opponent keeps firing off punches. So you keep on changing your boundaries of time, right? Um, a really good resource for getting a better understanding on Scrum is this free document online, Scrum Guide. Look at the latest version, go online, download the Scrum Guide. This is the authentic source of truth when it comes to Scrum. A really good resource for Kanban would be for Lean Kanban University. Go look at this university. It's got a bunch of things in it, right? Two good resources to know Scrum versus Kanban. 